Hello and welcome to this blog post. I'm one woman audiobook production company, actor and writer Rebecca McKernan, and this vlog showcases a selection of audiobooks that I have produced and narrated. Um, so to kick off 2003, I had to think for a second, um, I've got a series of books that I completed at the end of last year and I haven't yet shared with you. So we'll begin with one of my favourite people to work with. He's a wonderful man and a wonderful writer, Martin Schiller. And for those of you who are already familiar with his work, you will know that what Martin does, he uh, he spends a couple of different genres. Um, he's known for sci-fi with just a hint of fantasy, action, adventure, and this latest series, Our Man Adelaide, uh, is sort of an Avengers style uh, spy drama. By Avengers, I'm talking Dame Diana Rigg and not superheroes. Um, so this latest book, it's book three in the series, and I don't know how long the series is planned. Uh, one thing that I know with Martin is that he plans a three book series and it turns into six. So who knows? <laughs> but this is book three and it's, I think it's my favourite of Martin's books that I've read. It's um, it's set around the First World War and it's, um, it, Martin treats his subject matter with a lot of compassion and a lot of kindness. Um, and it's really beautifully written whilst keeping the heart of the drama and the action and the witty repartee, rep, repartee, witty repartee that we know Martin for, um, whilst still um, at times being sort of quite heartrending. Um, you know, it's clearly not nice subject matter to be talking about, and Martin deals with it really beautifully. So, this is the back information for Our Man Adelaide, The Great War, written by Martin Schiller. The war that everyone had feared has finally broken out. While Sir Thomas and Mr Bertrand cope with the grim realities of the modern battlefield in Flanders, Adelaide is set to hunt, sorry, Adelaide is sent to hunt for spies in the wilds of Yorkshire. The safety of her adopted countrymen and England's ability to resist the German onslaught are both at stake and she soon learns that the fight is not limited to Europe alone, but elsewhere and in the shadows. You'll have to forgive me, I'm reading off my phone. One thing I should warn you is that yesterday I dropped my phone in the bath, so uh, <laughs> it may or may not stand up for this entire vlog. Uh, if said phone allows me to, I would like to read to you just the first few pages of the prologue of Our Man Adelaide. Also, I'm just going to put a disclaimer out there. <laughs> It's the start of the year and I haven't settled into talking again. So, um, sorry, the audiobook production is likely to be better than this. Well, it's a matter of opinion, isn't it? <laughs> so this is the first few pages of the prologue. Mendocino County, California, United States, 9 June 1973. When Adelaide appeared at breakfast, she was attired in blue jeans and a heavy canvas apron. She also had a straw sun hat in hand and a pair of sturdy gardening gloves were tapped into one of the aprons pockets. Good morning, my dear, she greeted. Lovely day, isn't it? Just the perfect setting to work out in the garden for a bit. I should like that, Georgina smiled. As a little girl, I spent a good deal of time alongside my mother in our little patch back in Manchester. Wonderful. And while we work, we can discuss World War I. So do bring your pad and pen along. Sorry. So do bring your pen and pad along. I got it right the first time. <laughs> so do bring your pad and pen along. I shall. They then made short work of their meal, and once Georgina had changed into clothes that were better suited for outdoor work, they went outside and around to the garden. Like everything else about the dame, it held a surprise, for in addition to the normal blooms, the very centre of it was planted with bright red poppies, nor were they scattered about but had been grown in orderly rows so that they so that they resembled a formation of soldiers standing to attention on the parade ground. Flanders poppies, Adelaide explained. Papa the No, I had to Google this. <laughs> it's the Latin pronunciation of poppy. Uh, so this might be wrong. Papa ver <laughs> I don't know how to say it. 
plant is poppies, and then she says the Latin version, and the very thing to occupy us while we talk about the Great War. Being English, Georgina understood the significance of these flowers immediately. Ever since the First World War, they had become symbolic of the service and sacrifice of her nation's veterans, and were synonymous with November the 11th, Remembrance Day, when everyone wore them, including the Queen herself. Did you ever learn the poem that inspired the tradition of wearing the poppy on Remembrance Day? Adelaide asked her. I heard it in school, Georgina answered, but I'm ashamed to say that I cannot recall very much of it. It was written by John McRae, Adelaide informed her, and just after he had lost a friend on a Belgian battlefield. According to the tale, just after the battle, thousands of the poppies appeared, and the sight of this inspired him to write his verse. It goes like this. In Flanders' fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. I'm going to stop it there because that feels like such a poignant place to end, especially given everything, you know, that is ongoing. Um, yeah, like I say, this is my favourite of Martin's books and it's because it's so multifaceted and I think that the first couple of pages really set the scene. You know, you've got the vibrancy of the characters that Martin creates and you've got the beauty and the just wretchedness um, of that poem, which is so well placed. Uh, so, on that sombre note, you can listen to uh, you can listen to the Great War, Our Man Adelaide, the third installation uh, of this series, written by Martin Schiller. It's on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I've got any freebies, but if you want me to have a look, give me a shout. I'll see what I can find for you. And I will be back soon with uh, the next offering that I have for you. Thank you for joining me. I am Rebecca McKernan. You can find me in dark corners of many South Wales bars uh, or at rebeccamckernan.com. Thanks for, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Mwah.